Welcome. <laughs> I couldn't think of a better intro. So today we're going to talk about something that's going to um, it's going to trigger some people. Some people are going to be very upset, very offended, which is really easy to do these days, ain't it? Um, we're going to talk about several reasons why you should go to Sturgis, not Daytona. So, we just got back from Biketoberfest, so there's a couple disclaimers I guess I should add in here, right? First off, we went to Biketoberfest, not Bike Week. Now, the reason why that's not a disclaimer like I might be wrong is because some of the things that I disliked are probably worse during Bike Week than they are. I look like Sasquatch. I am so not man manicured. Anyway, so I couldn't come up with 10 reasons, but I came up with 8. Deal with it. That's how many I got. So let's go off with the list here. Oh, by the way, someone sent me a message the other day and said, "Were well, you sponsored by the Buffalo Chip?" I wish. <laughs> no, I'm not sponsored by the Buffalo Chip. It's a hat. It was a gift from El Buffalo. I appreciate the gift. He's a good dude. But hey, Buffalo Chip, if you're watching, free RV site would be really nice. <laughs> That's as much sponsorship I ever asked for. Let me stay for nothing. That'd be great. Anyway, we'll move back on. So, um, eight reasons why you should go to Sturgis, not Daytona. Um, this one I never thought of until I got there. Like, you kind of thought of some things that could be annoy annoying, but you don't think of it until you get there. This one was irritating. Uh, traffic. Now, I don't mean bikes and managing flow of bikes and all that sort of the wait to get into Bruce Ross Myers. And I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the fact that Daytona is a major metropolitan area that does not pause for the rally, for Biketoberfest or Bike Week. It is a city full of people driving to work, trucks delivering goods, et cetera, et cetera, and everything's about 30 miles apart. So you've got 30 miles of regular city traffic you're dealing with. Unlike most small towns for rallies or, you know, Sturgis, et cetera, where the locals either stay at home for the week or they get the F out. You know, like that does not happen in Daytona. It is completely full of cars and trucks and stuff everywhere you go. So that that's a pain in the ass. Um, this one was going to piss some people off. The crowd and vibe. Now I know some of you are calling back or probably remembering that. that I said that there was a little bit of a something this year at Sturgis that was different. First time in 21 I saw uh, a pretty big crowd of youngsters that I don't... Youngsters? Them damn youngsters that um, I don't believe even had motorcycles. And they were there in side-by-sides and Polaris Razors tearing the place up. Look, they, were, they had like bad intentions. That's the first time I had seen that, but that's rare. First time in many years ago when that I saw that, not only it will be next year, because security got on that stuff pretty quick. But the crowd and vibe at Daytona, I made notes, so forgive me for looking down. Um, Sturgis rallies for bikers and motorcycle nuts. Generally a happy place to be. On the, 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 the sidewalks of Sturgis or Deadwood, etc. Uh, uh, walking around the Buffalo Chip, Glencoe, all these other places. Everyone there loves bikes. And they pretty much want to talk to everybody. They want to get along. They want to make new friends. They make friends that they'll have for a lifetime. That kind of stuff. And that was not, that was completely not there at Daytona. Uh, as a matter of fact, I would say um, Daytona had a lot of punks. Not you if you're watching this probably, but <laughs> there were a whole lot of dudes on them slingshot things covered in Christmas lights and loud stereos just driving up and down the road, irritating everybody. Like that, that you don't see that in Sturgis nearly as much. So the vibe was a little off. I think the average bike, uh, you know, I was making the joke with one of my buddies who was there looking down a line of bikes going, see all those bikes? Collectively, they have 5,000 miles on them. And we were just laughing because it's not a rally for bikers and riders it's a rally for people who put stereos and stuff and you know and which i did but that's so i can hear it on the highway i'm talking about those guys who sit still in a parking lot and anyway those guys are there in freaking droves um it's less supportive of the mc culture this this I'm, I'm not i'm not a fan of this this bothers me there are no colors signs everywhere in daytona Every bar, in my own campground, I stayed at the Cackleberry and I was told by security that I was only allowed to wear my colors to my camper and from my camper, like leaving and going. I was not allowed to go to the tent wearing it, you know, whatever. And if you guys know the organization I'm a part of, 
We're not an MC. We're an MO and we serve abuse kids. What the, you're gonna have a problem with, my, anyway. I do understand the mindset that if you tell one, you have to tell them all, I understand that. But at the same time, I was seeing a lot of tiny clubs I've never heard of before in my life walking around wearing theirs, so what what is going on? But yeah, that, that whole not supportive of the MC culture thing just really irritates me. Um, went to go, I'm not gonna name names of bars because that would be rude, but you go to see a, a certain act that you're a huge fan of and, and I, I have to take my cut off and lock it in the bike and, and secure it so, and wear just my t-shirt when I just don't feel comfortable without my pockets and all my stuff and other hardware I like to carry. Um, that's irritating as hell. One thing I saw that I really liked though, when we were at Destination Daytona, we're hanging out at the Custom Dynamics tent, um, the dominant one percenter club in Florida showed up in a, by a large number and walked around wearing their colors and nobody said nothing to them. I mean, I wouldn't, <laughs> but no one did. And I really enjoyed seeing that. I liked seeing them dudes out there going, tell me to take mine off and they, they didn't. So uh, that was cool. So I, I, I liked seeing them do that, but that's gotta change. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna do that when I, after, before this video hits, after I upload it. Um, I actually thought about I'm gonna add a t-shirt on the Pro Monkey channel that says, if you can read this, I'm not allowed to wear my colors here <laughs> on the back. Because that's the only time you'll ever see the back of one of my t-shirts when I'm out riding. That's, you know, see the front, that's it. So I'm gonna make one. They'll be on the site. I'll put a link if, if you are interested and if you have the same situation. But I'll have a t-shirt that says, if you can read this, it's because I'm not allowed to wear my colors here. I'm, I'll put that on the back. Um, so that, that was irritating. Number five, it was crowded. Now, some of you Sturgis nuts are like, are you kidding me? Sturgis is crowded too. Yeah, but it was bad, you know. Main Street Saturday night during Biketoberfest. Now mind you, Biketoberfest is smaller than Bike Week. There are fewer people there. It doesn't draw the massive crowds that, that Bike Week does. And it was still freaking packed. Like, like this kind of thing going on the sidewalk. I don't like that, but it was just way too freaking crowded. Um, here's one that should be number one. These are in no order, but this should be number one. There's no riding. There just isn't. You know, like leaving the back, leaving, what is that? The, oh, hold on, name of the road. When you go the, out the back way at Cackleberry, that's kind of nice. Divided four lane forest, about 15 minutes. So you get to 95 and take 95 into Daytona, you know. Uh, and then the loop, yes, there is the loop, which is uh, thanks to buddy uh, Devin Mike that uh, uh, that took us on a ride through the loop. It's only about 30 minutes. So that's, it's a real nice ride, but it's about 30 minutes and that's all there is. Now, you could ride out the loop, turn around and ride back, and it's gonna be a different ride each way. So you have an hour, that's it. There's no riding in the Daytona area that's any good. If you're saying, oh yes there is, you probably haven't been to Sturgis, because what I'm talking about is Sheer cliffs, forests, rock formations, canyons, like just amazing stuff. There's none of that in Daytona. Uh, that should be number one, but again, these are no order. No order. Um, entertainment. Um, asterisk on this one. Uh, Mrs. Monkey and I love to death Jasmine Kane and her husband Kevin. Uh, Jasmine Kane's badass. She's biker royalty. We see her anytime she plays anywhere, and we got to see her at Daytona. So. That was cool. We got to see her in Daytona. We also got to see her um, backing the trailer out <laughs> into an alleyway as we were leaving, which was funny. But her and Kevin, they're fantastic. She's a great performer. She plays songs that we love. So it's a ton of fun to see her. That being said, there's no main stage environment. You know what I mean? The big giant production stage. Hers was good at Dirty Harry's, but I'm talking about uh, um, Buffalo Chip again, they have the giant stage. Next year you're gonna go see Snoop Dogg. It's a little topic right there, but you can see Snoop Dogg, Kid Rock, ZZ Top, major, major acts you can see at Buffalo Chip. I like the main stage environment where, you know, 15,000 of us are together enjoying the same concert together. That's cool, and that does not exist at Daytona. Um, hell, even Leesburg has a main stage. In, in the square, and, and if you go to Leesburg Rally, which is one-tenth the size of Daytona, uh, it's a Friday to Sunday kind of gig in Leesburg, uh, Orlando, Central Florida area. Uh, it, it, it's, it's, there's a main stage, the city pays for it, and there's fairly major acts that play that stage, or at least they were at one point. I'm not knocking them, I'm saying, you know, uh, like uh, Vanilla Ice, <laughs> who I hate. But nonetheless, you know, 
acts like that will play Leesburg on the main stage and you get a couple thousand people having a beer together having a good time I like that vibe um, number two this one maybe I'm being picky I thought maybe I was being picky and then the missus said the same thing we're walking around the vendor set up a destination Daytona I'm not a fan of it and, and it's not necessarily their fault because right there if you ever been to De destination Daytona you got a J&P cycle store which is giant and you've got Bruce Ross Myers Harley, which is right there, giant. And then there's a couple of buildings in between that do things like stereos and detailing and there's a leather shop or used to be there and stuff like that. So what they do with all the vendors that come in from out of town is they just kind of stick them all over the place, like little pockets of them and stuff. And it's just kind of a pain in the butt to navigate, you know, to find, uh, to find who you're looking for. So not a fan of that in comparison to uh, the rally at Exit 55 at Black Hills Harley at Sturgis they, they have a massive parking lot. I mean, as big as my subdivision. And the vendors are all set up in rows, and you feel like you're at a mall for bikers. I mean, you can just go up and down the rows with beer vendors and bartenders and stuff, and some live music and food, and just walk around and look at parts all day. It's a better, like, uh, finding a new parts and the next new cool thing. It's it's more fun to do that at Black Hills Harley at Rally X, X55 than it is at uh, Destination Daytona. My opinion. And number one, this is no surprising, not, not a surprise, some of you are going to laugh at me. It's expensive. Yes, I know. Sturgis is expensive also. But it's worth it? If you know what I mean? I, I, yeah, Sturgis is, is, is many, many thousands of dollars. It can be done cheaper, I know. There's someone out there that says, I've done it for $200. Good. I, I, it, I don't. I, you know, an RV site and fuel, $1,500 in fuel. That's part of the problem with Sturgis, it is far pretty much for everyone. $1,500 in fuel to pull my rig, uh, and a campsite, and campground passes, and your beer money, and your t-shirt money, and all that stuff. Yeah, I know, it adds up, and Sturgis is really expensive. But so is Daytona. Um, my campsite was $300 and something dollars at Cackleberry, and I think it's cheaper for Bike Tour and Bike Week. I could be wrong. Um, you got your seven, eight dollar beers. Uh, me and the missus went and had breakfast. Uh, while we were at the Cackleberry and one of the food vendors very nice lady and pretty good food It was $35 for two like omelets and two diet cokes <laughs> so It's expensive Daytona is is really too expensive for what it is and the level of writing that it has but This video was not meant to infuriate a bunch of people. It was meant really for me to more say why Sturgis is better you have some of the if not the best writing in the country You've got a really good vendor experience if you're out there shopping looking for new parts. You've got a great vibe with everyone there who loves bikes and generally likes to talk to each other and wants to have a good time together. You've got major entertainment, giant stages, big name acts, just a lot more fun to go see those. Um, and things. <laughs> I'm sure I'm forgetting something. What did I forget? Put that down in the comments. Uh, and before I sign off real quick, Please hit subscribe if you haven't. Hit like and comment and subscribe and all that stuff. I know you're sick of hearing that. All the channels say that, but this is a channel that is only funded by ad revenue. We don't we don't ever ask you for money. We don't ever ask you to sign up for something or pay monthly or this, that, and the other. Go buy a t-shirt if you want to, but please hit subscribe, like, comment, all that stuff, because that's all we ever ask you for. So that's it. Take care of each other out there. We'll talk real soon. Bye.